Now, how did you figure out that this was achiral? Well, we wrote down the mirror image, and then we saw that we could rotate it and superimpose it on the original. However, notice that the first time you tried that, you got it wrong, and that's what happens to many students. Many students are not very good at superimposing mirror images, so it's good to have a shortcut or a trick. And, and you did remember the trick. The trick is, if there is a plane of symmetry, then you know the molecule is achiral. And that's really much easier in most cases than actually writing down the mirror image. Mm -hmm. So I think you saw that yeah. this is the plane of symmetry. This is a plane of symmetry. Um, how do we know this is a plane of symmetry? Because this could um, act like a mirror. Um, and if the bromine looked in the mirror, the top half really would see something that looks like what's underneath the dashed line here. Um, so that would be the easier trick way to see this is an achiral molecule. And in fact, uh, I think that's much better for most students. So on the exam, you probably are rarely going to use this technique of writing down the mirror image. In fact, I'll erase that now, even though you should know that you could do that. Usually, it's much easier to look for the plane of symmetry. So what we've seen here is chiral stereocenters can make you chiral, can make a molecule chiral. But there are some exceptional cases where you're achiral even though you have stereocenters. And basically, it's because the two stereocenters cancel each other out. In a sense, the two stereocenters are canceling each other out. There's a special name for this type of molecule that's achiral, even though it has stereocenters. Do you remember what do we call the molecule? Like an enantiomer? An that would actually be a different idea. Oh. All right. Uh, so it looks like actually you might need some work yeah. on stereochemistry. I don't know if that's the best thing for us to spend a lot of time on today, because that was from earlier in the course. But the name for a molecule that is achiral, even though it has stereocenters, is meso. Oh, meso. It's the opposite of what I just said. Right, because what's sometimes when you get a, a reaction, you get a meso compound, or you get diantomers or, or enantomers, right? It would take a while to clarify all those ideas. Yeah. Um, but it's true, a meso molecule is a molecule that does not have an enantiomer. So in a sense, yeah, they're kind of opposite terms. In the same yeah. section, so I got those a little bit confused. Yeah, unfortunately, um, students uh, oftentimes don't really get clear, clear in their mind about the difference between all these different concepts. In any case, here we have, this is a meso molecule. So what does meso mean? Meso means you have stereocenters and a plane of symmetry. Yeah. Or, really, the, the, the official definition is that you have stereocenters, but you're still an achiral molecule. Um, but that must mean you have a plane of symmetry. So for practical purposes, this is the most practical definition of meso. It's got stereocenters, but it's got a plane of symmetry, which means that meso molecules are always achiral, despite the fact that they have stereocenters. So you need to have both of these things in order to be meso. All right, well, we can spend a couple more minutes on just reviewing the basic ideas here. So we can quickly see this has stereocenters by seeing that there's carbons with four different groups attached. And then we should be able to quickly see that it's meso by finding the plane of symmetry. So it should be relatively easy to see this as an achiral molecule. So again, we've seen that there's a big difference between having chiral carbons and being a chiral molecule. Would this, would this molecule rotate plane polarized light? I um, no, because it's not an achiral molecule. Yeah, we said it's achiral, and one of the definitions of achiral is that it, well, chiral means you do rotate light, chiral molecule, so an achiral molecule does not rotate light. So meso molecules never rotate plane polarized light, despite having chiral carbons. So chirocarbons might give you the potential to rotate light, but if they cancel each other out, you still won't rotate the light. How about this molecule? Would this molecule have rotated plane polarized light? By the definition, yes. Yeah, because it is a chiral molecule, so it would rotate the light. Here we have one stereocenter, and it clearly is not canceled out by any other stereocenters, because there are no other stereocenters. Uh, yeah, so let's look at a couple other brief examples. I'm sorry, is this molecule meso? No. No, it's not. Although notice it does um, have half of the definition. It does have a stereocenter, but it doesn't have a plane of symmetry. Although um, actually it's not that easy to see it doesn't have a plane of symmetry. But um, for one thing, 
Meso means that your stereo centers are canceling each other out. Well, if you only have one stereo center, there's no way you could be meso. So the easiest way to see that this is not meso, it has only one stereo center. So I can build that into the definition of meso. Meso means you have to have two or more stereo centers, because otherwise there's no way to have a plane of symmetry where the stereo centers on either side of the plane of symmetry are canceling each other out. So what did we say? This is not meso. Does this molecule have any stereo centers? Um, it has two. That's right. And is this a chiral molecule? Yes. Does it have a plane of symmetry? No. Good. All right. Very good. That's right. We can't do the same thing we did over here. This would not be a plane of symmetry because when the bromine looks, if the bromine looked in a mirror, it would see another bromine. It wouldn't see a hydrogen. So this is not acting like a mirror. We can't pretend this is a mirror and that this is the image that the top half of the molecule would see. Um, you have to check whether there's any other planes of symmetry, too, but there are no other planes of symmetry. For example, is this a plane of symmetry? No, because when bromine looks in the mirror, it should see another bromine, and it shouldn't see a hydrogen. So there are no planes of symmetry here. So what did we say? There's two stereocenters here. And uh, is this a chiral molecule? No. Oh, it's not a chiral molecule. Yeah. It's it is. chiral gotcha. molecule. Yeah, that's <laughs> tough. Sorry. It is A. Chiral Space molecule, chiral. yeah. Is this molecule meso? Mm, it's got half of the definition, so no. Yeah, in fact, we already thought about that. The, the fact that it wasn't meso is what told us it was a chiral molecule. Meso would have to have the plane of symmetry, but it's good that you went back to the definition. So it's not meso, that's what made it a chiral molecule. So would this rotate plane polarized light? Yes. Yeah, this would rotate plane polarized light. Um, okay, now notice um, there would be another way to tell this is chiral. The other way to tell this is chiral is actually use this definition and write down its mirror image. And then you would uh, and then test it and you would see that there's no way you could rotate that mirror image to superimpose them. But that is not the method I would encourage you to use because it's pretty hard to, to try all the different rotations of the mirror image. It's much faster just to look for stereo centers and then check for a plane of symmetry. Uh, while we're talking about this. Well, here's a stereochemistry handout. So I guess we covered some of the stuff here on page two uh, about how to tell whether something is uh, meso. So, or, uh, well, yeah. So notice that first of all, you check for stereocenters. Mm -hmm. If there's no stereocenters, then you know the molecule is achiral. But then if it does have stereocenters, it still could be achiral if there's a plane of symmetry, which would make it meso, only if there are stereocenters and no plane of symmetry. Would we know that the molecule is a chiral molecule? Yeah. Okay, so hopefully that clarifies the difference between chiral carbons and chiral molecules. You need to have some chiral carbons before you can be a chiral molecule, but even with chiral carbons, you might still not be a chiral molecule if the two chiral carbons cancel each other out. And we've seen that sometimes multiple stereocenters will cancel each other out, and sometimes they won't. Uh, yeah, this is important stuff, so we can spend another minute on this. Remember, a chiral molecule is a molecule that is different from its mirror image. Um, so that means that if you wrote down a chiral molecule and then you wrote down its mirror image, those would represent two different molecules. What do we call the relationship between those two different molecules? Enantiomers. Excellent. That's right. That's good. Enantiomers are two mirror images that are still different molecules. Yeah. Enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images. Uh, so another definition of a chiral molecule, do chiral molecules have enantiomers? Yes. Yeah. Pretty much by definition. They have enantiomers. I knew they were related to So an achiral molecule would be the opposite of all these things. An achiral molecule is the same as its mirror image, or an achiral molecule does not rotate plane polarized light, or an achiral molecule does not have an enantiomer. Those, those, you just flip all of these to find the definition of an achiral molecule. So let's go back to this molecule. Does this molecule have an enantiomer? Yes. Yeah, it does. 
Does this molecule have an enantiomer? No. No, even though it has stereocenters, it has no enantiomer because it's meso. So that's achiral. And does this have an enantiomer? Yes. Good. Well, let's spend another second on that. How could you draw? What would be the quickest way to get the enantiomer? Here? The quickest way I do it is I draw the same molecule, but I switch the wedges. Wedges in the dash. So you would swap the hydrogen and the bromine. Yeah. All right, that's very good. The reason that works is that what you're really using is the single swap rule. I don't know if we've talked about that, yeah, but anytime you make a single swap, that always gives you the opposite configuration at a stereocenter. If you make a single swap, that gives you the opposite configuration at a stereocenter. So what you're proposing to do is swap the hydrogen and the bromine. So that would uh, give you uh, the, uh, the opposite configuration here. Um, so that would give you the enantiomer. Now, you should recognize that you could make any swap. You could also swap the methyl and the ethyl or you could swap the hydrogen and the methyl. But in most cases, it's by far the most convenient to swap what's on the wedge and what's on the dash. So that's very good. 